Easy HDR has been around for more than 10 years and has gone through upgrades and changes. It has an easy interface that is straightforward. This software is available to PC and Mac users. It can work with JPEGs, TIFFs, and RAW files. You can enhance a single image or multiple images with varying exposure values. Its ability to create realistic HDR images is a wonderful feature. This panel pops up when I first load my images. I am given the option of lens correction, alignment, uh, true HDR, smart merge or stack. I'm going to choose true HDR, uh, noise filtering, and ghost removal. Since this was shot on a tripod and there was no wind, I'm going to uncheck that. And then I will go ahead and generate the HDR. My HDR image has now opened up into the main interface and as you can see on the right hand side we have our main control panel with our curves, a histogram, tone mapping, color saturation, uh, hue, color adjustment, and vignette. These are my global adjustments uh, as long as I'm on my base image. Then on the left here are about 25 presets that do come with the uh, software. And uh, so here you have clicked presets. History is everything that I've done to this image so far. And then I have my navigator. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on presets. And then up here is um, the masking layers. And this is a, this is a neat feature that this software has. And what I've done is I've made some of my masks so that you don't have to wait around and, and watch me create them. So at this point I have them all turned off and I have my base image which I chose from the presets but you can also create your own presets and make your own tone mapping adjustments. But in for this demonstration I've picked one out that I think is a good starting point and then I added if you can add a layer and these are masking layers so we'll go I'll go ahead and click on the foliage and show you at, in the foliage um, the mask that I created by clicking on the eyeball and it will show I have the option of the red mask, green, blue, or only mask, and here's the red. So I used the uh, paint bucket tool and clicked on, basically clicked on the area I wanted to have masked. And with the intelligent slider, this is a threshold, so the higher up it goes, the more uh, colors it will choose. And if the slider is to the left, then it um, is a lot more selective, but you can keep adding. So let's say I want to get a little bit more of this green. I can click there and it should include that green. So there it included the green. I'm and if it uh, has colors out here that I do not want, I can press the erase button and I can go and erase some of that color from uh, where I do not want that mask. So that's my foliage mask and what I can do at this point is turn off the color of that mask and then either choose one of these presets or come over to the right hand side and make my adjustments. I'm going to make a real obvious one by just turning down my strength and as you can see, it affected just the green foliage. So I'm going to put that back in a comfortable spot. Now you don't have to do all of these masks if you don't want to. You can just do a straight image, but this is for demonstration purposes to show you the capabilities of this software. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the sky and select the sky. And what you'll also notice is that there's a slider here and that is the opacity of that particular mask. So now that I'm on the sky, we'll click on that. And this one I did the gradient tool, which is this. And 
when I clicked on that gradient tool, I drug it down and created the mask. So on this mask, this mask, uh, I changed my settings and increased the, the blues in that sky. And then I wanted to do the clouds, the uh, yellowish clouds, and make them a little bit more obvious and brighter. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, I increased, here I increased the saturation of um, the yellows of the sky and also used this uh, saturation bar. And you can pull on any of these uh, lines. I'm going to zero it out and show you that with these lines, I can drag them and increase the saturation or decrease the saturation of just those colors within my mask. And then finally, I did the mountain and that mask. Uh, I did that with the uh, paint bucket again, and then used the erase tool to get the areas that I did not want affected. I could do this a little cleaner uh, in the future, but for this demonstration, it's uh, somewhat of a quick um, mask that I did on that. And then made those adjustments to the mountain. And again, I can show you just through the strength uh, what changes I did make. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you increase the strength too much, uh, you'll start getting the halo. And so you can see down in this area a little bit of the halo. So I'm going to decrease that strength uh, enough to still have impact but not have that halo. And then finally, if I want to make further adjustments, I can go back to my base image and either choose a different preset or come back over here and make global adjustments. And I can also then add a vignette. Now, if I am happy with this, then as a final step, I can now go to image and transform or crop, rotate, distort, or change the perspective. So the screen has opened up with my cropping tools and the option of being able to straighten, uh, customize the cropping as well as distort and perspective on the X and perspective on the Y. So I will go ahead at this point and show you that I can straighten it. Straightening it a little bit and then I can do a crop based on the original and crop in the pink lines and apply. And there's my final cropped image and once I save it I can also uh, um, open it in an external editor and that would be something you would set up in your settings and that way uh, any dust spots can be removed and any additional editing uh, for final print can be done. And there you have it. This is Easy HDR. I'm going to give you my pros and cons as well. The pros of Easy HDR are that it integrates with Lightroom or can act as a standalone works with both Windows and Mac, can work with a single image or multiple images. I like the curves. Uh, the color bar for color saturation adjustment is nice. Uh, the masking layers with their own tone mapping settings is uh, a nice feature. A micro adjustment for fine detail and the ability to sharpen, crop, straighten, change the perspective, rotate, and resize. The cons of Easy HDR are the halos can appear as soon as the HDR image is generated. It would be nice to have a basic exposure slider. Manual curve adjustment is very sensitive and there is no clone, erase, or dust spot removal tool. But all in all, this is a great software and I highly recommend it.